Oh, that was a very abrupt. Yes. <laughs> it is Wednesday night again. This is the Wednesday night mouse party. Tonight we've got Gizzard Gary. How's it going, Gizzard? Well, it's going pretty good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And G Webs, how you doing? Good evening. Getting ready to plug in the puppy, recharge him. I just found a bunch of wires. I'm trying to figure out why I had all these wires in a drawer. I think they're extras. Nothing special about them. No, it's broken. Uh, Maybe they're old. Do you keep wires like this? Oh, yeah. Look, that one's broken also. I think these are bad ones. Do you keep wires like when you get a little short one like this with some new thing? And yeah. you already have like 100 of them. Do you keep the new one also? I do. I try not to, but I usually do. Like, I'm about to throw both of these away because they're both obviously bent, right? Like, I'm not crazy, right? Like, that's broken. Yeah. I have enough of them. I'm throwing them away. I did it right there. All right. Sorry. Boring way to start the show, I guess. I put a link out there that people could follow the link to be part of the show. Uh oh, hey, that reminds me. Let's get a banner going there. Uh, let's get the right one going. There we go. At the bottom of the screen, there is an email address on tacticalfoss at gmail.com and a link. Those will get you somewhere. You can send in comments, suggestions, or pictures within reason. And in the description, there's a link for GoFundMe for um budget guns and gears his wife passed away so he has set up a gofundme to pay for a funeral for her so <clears throat> there's a link i don't know if you got a couple extra bucks you can maybe send his way there's a link that'll get you over there and there's um this week's poll it's uh, pinned at the top of the chat, so if you haven't voted in there, head over there and vote. We'll look at that here in just a little bit. And hopefully we get a few more people. I was going to do a giveaway. And give away one of the... That's uh, There we go. Uh, if nobody else shows up, you can just send that to me. My patches and one of the... To a brotherhood patches that I got from uh, TPC. What is what is TPC? What is this all about? Oh, that's the what is TPC? The poor conservative. Poor conservative. Thank you. Huh? Hey, he uh, he's changed it a few times. Poor conservative to a chef and barbecue, and he's been a couple other things, but uh, I know him best as TPC. And then also some stickers and stuff, and uh, maybe one of the poker chips. Oops. It's got Baron on one side, and uh, that's a, I got a real bad glare right there for some reason. There we go. So hopefully we get uh, a few more people in there and make it more fun. But uh, So we'll hold off on that for a little while, see... Who shows up? But so far out there, Krabby Turtle was first. Midnight Range TM was out there. A rare sighting. Uh, Optimus Prime Rib. Grim 90. Vulcan Rumble. Uh, he's got a nor'easter going on where he's at. It's rainy here. Kind of opened up a little bit uh, the last hour. The Gizzard Gary. G Webs and Mr. Bob Dabalina. There's supposed to be some kind of tsunami about to happen in Japan, or maybe it was about to happen and then it didn't happen. But uh, Taiwan had an earthquake, so they mm. got ready for a tsunami in Okinawa in southern Japan. It sounded like. Did you hear about that? I hadn't heard about that. I just barely heard about it on the on some like social stuff this evening. Yeah, Taiwan took a pretty good hit out of it all. 
I'm hoping, uh, I'm assuming uh, ghosts people are okay over there. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, when the... Well, they're not... Visitors, when the... So I think the one that hit, that took out Fukushima, when that one happened a few years back now, uh, my wife was set to fly uh, later that day to go home, take my son and go see grandma. And I just happened to be up in the middle of the night and I don't usually watch the news either. And I thought, you know, I was up. It's like, well, let's see what's on the news. And uh, there's a lot going on the news. So I went and woke up my wife said, Hey, there's something going on. You need to get up. And luckily her, uh, her mom and sister are, kind of on the other side of the island from where it happened so and they're they live in a valley they're protected from all that kind of stuff roy munson's out there good evening oh so let me call up the poll i thought you were gonna say yeah. bracket here no no unfortunately I was getting the bracket ready and I put too much oil in it and it blew a seal. So I need to need to get the seal replaced on it before we can do another bracket. I feel like the bracket's personal life is its own business. Yeah, I wouldn't judge uh, a bracket based on one action like that. So uh, this week's poll was, should marijuana be legalized federally and be treated the same as alcohol? Uh, yes, no, or not sure. 83% said yes, 16% no, and 1% was not sure. But what if you uh, wanted it deregulated but not regulated like alcohol? Uh, well, I hadn't framed it that way. I mean, I don't know if that's a big position or not but i thought about that as soon as i was reading them i'm like oh wait a minute it seems like there's a fourth option here that's not addressed well i, I this I, kind I of came out of position. yeah i'm just throwing it out there it's like a tidiness or whatever um what gave me the idea was squibs video and then reading the comments in that uh the one that he did what yesterday or this morning, I don't remember if it was this morning or yesterday. Oh, uh, I must have missed it. And so I, you know, it kind of got me thinking, well, I, I use that as a poll. I, I didn't expect um, that many to say yes. I, th I thought there'd be a few more no's in there. That was more controversial. Yeah. I, Times are changing, but looking at the comments, if all... vandalism. The surprise that there's still people that have any issue with it. There's many states that have essentially ignored all the federal laws at this point. Like, what's the what's the resistance? What's the issue? What's the concern or whatever? Well, I think part of it is just the stigma that was attached to it. Um, is you know for some people it's still there they still see it as you know bad people do it um i've never i've never smoked pot i you know have had friends who have but it was never anything that i got into um but i i don't care uh, personally if somebody does or doesn't uh, pretty much you know, kind of what why I put the treat same as alcohol is my thinking is basically for uh, marijuana there's there really isn't anything you can ascribe to marijuana that you couldn't ascribe to alcohol which is legal um, but regulated well you can't overdose yeah, I mean, they're not exactly the same thing, but it's kind of like coffee. It's like I was saying, it's more like coffee and I don't know, sugar or something. Like, I don't know what the other one, oh, tobacco, I guess would be the other one, right? Yeah. But I guess uh, you can't overdose on tobacco, but they still regulate it. 
maybe they could just quit regulating shit. Yeah. Um, I, they're, I, I would be fine with less regulation overall. That all comes from morality, right? And from, uh, uh, you know, some like uh, shared uh, concept of what was right, like you said, what bad people did and what good people did or whatever. And, you know, as times change or whatever, doesn't, don't they adopt? you know, more whatever, you know, current rules or whatever, or uh, enforcement. Yeah, I meant to look up the, the history of it because um, I can't remember the exact details anymore. But basically it was uh, the whole reason uh, it was made illegal in the first place. It was being used as a scapegoat. Um but I don't, I don't remember the details of it. Am I breaking up or is he? It's probably me. Uh, my internet's not, not very stable no, right now. That's why I'm not ever sure. Because uh, it says I have an unstable connection. So I might blank out now and again. Oh, I'm in the same thing. But... Um, so yeah, it wasn't the the whole reason it was made illegal in the first place and wasn't really any reason other than they needed something to blame to take focus off of something else. But I don't again, I don't remember exactly what it was all about. Um but Vandaliska said uh nah the state should decide that's that's another issue, um, which I'll get we'll talk about here after I get through the comments. Um, Mike Gillick, yes, but should be left all natural. New York Outcast, just about all drugs should be legal for adults. Let natural selection sh sort it out. Um, and budget gun cinema. So it's gonna have to disagree with you on that. Sounds good on paper, but they tried it in Portland, and it has been such a disaster that they just reversed the bill. Only took three years to reveal the terrible idea it was. Downtown Portland is a drug-infested zombie wasteland now. Um, that's, I think that's more a problem of they're not taking care of the surrounding problems. Not so much the deregulation. Yeah. It was it like a bunch of church going like community scholars or whatever. And then they legalized whatever drugs and then everybody turned to crime or was it was Portland weird. And then it got weirder. Uh, Portland was already weird. Um, they, they stole Houston, not Houston. Um, and what's the Texas city that's liberal? Austin. Austin, thank you. Uh, keep Austin weird. They kind of stole that, and they'll say keep Portland weird. That's quite a competition to be in. Oh, shit, I've only ever heard Portland. I didn't know they stole that from Austin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they got it from Austin. Okay. But I, I couldn't say for sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Vandaliska, when he's saying let the states decide, I kind of lead towards that just because I would prefer to see a smaller central government and you know, more states' rights. And it allows different experiments, right? It, to technically like 50 different versions of it, 50 different iterations of it. So you can find things, whatever, you can find things that work better for different places and, uh, you know, evolve things, I guess. I like that. Yeah. So I, I would say. Or just no laws at all, because I don't think we need laws on stupid shit. 
yeah. say these are all morality laws. These are all like, we think that this is bad, so therefore now there's laws against it. Well, guess what? Like, what if somebody else doesn't think it's bad? What do you get to put your, th- your like your ideas on other people? Unless it's killing somebody else, leave everybody alone. So I'm down for getting rid of these type of laws. I don't know what to call it. There's another word for these kind of laws that just mess with some people and aren't really, you know, like, I don't know, like murder or something is an obvious one, but these other ones, I don't know if they're, there's not, I thought there's a name for these type. Oh, these, I kind of almost put these under morality laws. Yeah, is that the right way? And then same with like drinking and that kind of stuff. Like yeah. obviously if you do something bad when you're drunk, well, okay, you can't use drunk as an excuse. You did something bad, period, right? Like, there you go. You know yeah, me, that, just that that's kind of, it's kind of what got me thinking about it was um, the, I, I, it kind of in the comments, and I think what Squib had said was about people doing weed and then driving. And Gary mentioned it's still illegal to do it while you're driving. I think you said that in the comment. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Which, you know, that that's kind of what got me on to treating it the same as alcohol. Um, there's, you know, you you do it at home. Fine. It's just when you when you do something else and you're impaired, you know, driving or heavy machinery, stuff like that. Well, I think in reality, it's just like anything else, like drinking or anything, like smoking, eating, smoking cigarettes. Uh, when you're experienced with it and what's the word? Not immune, but, you know, when you've got a tolerance yeah. for it, then you're going to be able to do whatever. And if you're brand new and you get goofy the first time, even just like I was saying, cigarettes, you could be clumsy and not understand the cigarette is going to ash and, you know, things going to fall off of it and and if you're driving and you get a piece of ash in your eyeball and you wreck, that's the same as being drunk and wrecking, right? You still wrecked. So I think it's more than just saying, like, nobody can drink alcohol because some people are plastered constantly, you know, the alcoholics and stuff. Like, maybe somebody that's got chronic pain, not that they're alcoholic because they got nothing else better to do, but they're in chronic pain and they don't want to be on opioids. So they're probably three or four shots of booze where I'd be drunk, and that's them you know normal that's them getting rid of their pain that they can go do whatever they need to do for the day and who's going to tell them that they can't drive like that they that's how they are and i'm not giving them a pass i mean there's probably healthier things to do blah 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 whatever right but i'm just saying like saying across the board anybody that touches something is automatically the same nah that's unrealistic just like uh, Mr. sugar so Mr. Mr. bob dabalina said uh, yeah. malum prohibitum is the term for something that is legal simply because of regulation versus something evil. Oh, thanks. That's what I was looking for. I knew there was a concept there. And I'm down for, I don't need those laws, right? What do we need those things? Back in the day, there was stuff like, oh, I don't like it. So, you know, let's make it a law. And enough people didn't care. So now it's a dumb law. You know, like you can't wash your donkey on Tuesday or something. But that's that's one of the, the <laughs> phrases that drives me crazy. There should be a law about it that phrase no there should there probably shouldn't be and i think at a certain point we've got to decide whether the cost of enforcing measures like this the cost of the police efforts in you know eradicating marijuana the police efforts in you know putting taking people to jail and the cost involved in that is is it worth it for what it is gaining society and i think that is what is sliding the scale you know the the public's perception towards legalizing it it's like it's not working what we're doing now is not working and it's costing us dearly we've got people in jail that probably don't need to be there you know we've spending x amount of money on this that that we could be spending on far more important things I, I, I agree. Um, and part of the, on the law enforcement side is, oh, close that. It's 
kind of kind of like uh, I've got a muddled thought. Um, it's it becomes we need more money to do this. Um, so they're spending like kind of yeah uh, that thought didn't come out right. So uh, yeah. I don't know. I took like a ten. I only got like a ten minute nap. And oh no! It's almost worse than not taking a nap. Yeah, it is. So I, I took a nap. I was took got to take a nap early, which you know it's great, but it's not my usual schedule. So I'm I'm off my schedule. I'm off my meds. I'm all I'm all messed up. Um, but. There's a lot of money being pumped into uh, the war on drugs, and it's not it's not really getting anywhere, which is basically kind of what you're saying. Right. <laughs> and if uh, a lot of people think if you legalized it and set up a structure for like you were talking distribution in a similar manner as alcohol, you gain control of it that way and you eliminate a lot of the allure of bootlegging because there's really no need to bootleg what you can legally buy now. You know, you eliminate a lot of the street selling, the sneaking stuff across the border stuff like that and maybe you solve a lot more societal problems by gaining control of it plus let's not forget the bonus of the government gets to collect taxes this way deworm is out there (laughs) well they actually make money (laughs) part of part of the problem uh with that is they put basically a syntax on it so it makes it expensive i don't i don't know the prices because i've never never bought it but i know like washington makes a lot of money off it because they can i was talking about marijuana and my puppy went out and bought a joint Uh uh-oh uh so there i think there that still does keep a market for illegal marijuana, you, you know, in states where it's legalized because it is possibly cheaper, but I don't, again, I don't know prices. So I don't know if it is or not. I just know that the, on the state side that they make a lot of money off it. You know, I'm just wondering Probably why the take the chance. Of- I'm saying off the taxes you make money. Um, it because when when people talk about legalizing, they'll talk about it'll you know put the cartels out of business. Well, it won't because they're not going to just stop because weed was legalized. Um, I think that's part of the reason you see them kind of move into other drugs like fentanyl and stuff. Mm. That's a whole thing. Is my mic working? Yeah. yeah. I've been watching a lot about that lately because it's interesting and it's changed a lot. But think about meth and when meth used to have to be made in meth labs like that one TV show and everything. Now they make yeah. meth in two liter bottles walking around the store. So meth yeah. is different now than it used to be. So um, that's different. Like you said, fentanyl. There's Chinese, I mean, anybody that wants to ignore this can do it, but the Chinese, the, the, what do they call it, the precursors for fentanyl are coming from China and they're yeah. growing those, yeah. they're making that de- just deliberately. So uh, I was just looking at a thing today about the commercials that are in China, uh, Chinese commercials in Mexico that are running in Mexico. You can watch them if you want. They're, they're crazy weird. But anyway, uh, China and Mexico have a relationship just as much as the United States and Mexico. Uh, they had a bunch of Chinese slaves back in the olden, olden, olden days, way before we were a country, and they've had a mixed like culture for a long time. So they've got a relationship there. And when all those cartels, well, like you were saying, 
they I think there what you were saying there was at least according to whoever I've been listening to recently, that was the original theory. If you make marijuana legal, it'll put a yeah. dent in the cartel's ability to do stuff. But it's not that there was a lot between fentanyl. You're right that now it's human trafficking. Human trafficking is really the big uh, thing now. But um, the and they bring fentanyl with them or whatever. But the fentanyl is so small compared to drugs and or marijuana was that it's not even hardly an issue to get fentanyl across now. Um, but the, uh, the the cartels made so much money during the time that marijuana was illegal, and they were bringing marijuana across and cocaine. And all that and it's really interesting to get into it it started with uh opium technically we we asked mexico to make opium for us because we didn't want to be dependent on far east so we started making opium back before world war one or maybe during world war one in mexico so they started to learn that and then uh anyway it, it went to, from cocaine to mar marijuana to cocaine to opium to, mar to marijuana to cocaine then back to fentanyl and marijuana and stuff so it, at a time i think you know, i haven't heard anybody specifically talk about it but i'm guessing it may be the 90s if we would have had like the era today was it like 23 or 29 states have recreational marijuana or something crazy like if we would have had that in the 90s we could have broke the cartels that way because the cartels infrastructure was based on marijuana because marijuana is restricted here people wanted it there was a massive market for it but when marijuana or when the cartels were given so much time uh they they were into cocaine and into everything else and meth meth happened so they were making a ton of money when meth happened but then the cartels aren't just like the cartels all living in harmony they hate each other and they're constantly killing each other and taking each other's stuff so when that happened they became huge like they're giant and they they, they diversified a long time ago in the early 2000s so you can't break the cartels anymore they're they're not just illegitimate they're legitimate and Ill illegitimate they, and it's gonna they be way the more they run the avocado business <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like they do the way more than Mexico are it's owned by the cartels so i'm still pro no stupid laws or whatever those were i lost all my stuff that was on the screen before but you know whatever he said those laws are called malum prohibitum i'm a for still that but I don't think that's going to hurt the cartels anymore. We have to do other things about the cartels, but uh, I just don't. I just I, I think it's a dumb thing. To, like I think Gizzard said, it's a great point. Wasting our time on that and our prisons and just messing with people. Like it's just a seems like such a with all the other things going on in the world, it seems like such a dumb thing to waste our time. Not our time, but like our resources, police and everything else. Think about it in all their as you were saying that, I was thinking about, I don't know how long it is, but however long police academies are, think about if you could just take that time that they spend on all the drug laws and put that to different use, right? All Given right. that same loop for other things. And I think we'd be better off than worrying about who's doing what drugs or whatever. I think I like the old thing back in the 90s, they would say, look at Europe where they treat it as a medical thing. I mean, I don't know if that's perfect or not, but I like that concept of think of it as like alcoholism. Nobody puts you in jail for alcoholism if you do stuff while you're drunk he you put you in jail but just for being drunk give you some help right yeah uh mr bob i think we learned two things from the prohibition era prohibition doesn't work it creates a black market and the government is willing to poison people to push their agenda which is um some of the some of the stories about people going blind from moonshine that was the government poisoning moonshine to discourage people from buying it oh really i never heard of that one yep. uh, like some going of it in is, and just throwing alcohol in it like just making it what actually moonshine would do to you or is it like just fake that moonshine makes you go blind uh what i don't it can't like if you get too much of the um methanol ethanol methanol the stuff that kind of the highest alcohol content, the top. Yeah, like and when they I think they call it the head, it, they throw out. It's on top or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they just put that back in to make people un, like skeptical of the blends or whatever. Yeah, I'm not sure what what they put in it, um, but they, 
Yeah, that's what uh, the 26th federal government in an effort to enforce the so-called noble experiment mandated adding poisons like methanol to industrial alcohol so to discourage people from drinking it. Oh, like um, during, is that during the prohibition? Like, yeah. like uh, alcohol for cleaning or something, they would mess with it so that you, you'd die if you drank it. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, but they, they did that they did that with the moonshine, too. Um, and Combat Wombat, uh, wa uh, Washington fiscal year 2022, the state generated $509.4 million in revenue from the marijuana tax. He refuses to look at that icon, even though I made him look at it. He didn't even look at it. <laughs> I never noticed that icon until I seen it on the screen like that. I don't know. Has you seen any? I haven't really paid attention, I guess. For the longest time, I only paid attention to gun news, and now I don't pay attention to any news, really, except for a little bit of gun news. But is there... All kinds of horrible things happening because 29 states have recreational marijuana. I mean, I don't even hear about it. Ever. Blood running there, down the streets and stuff, you mean? Or? Yeah, joints running down the streets. And... For, for <laughs> Washington, Halloween candies are all marijuana. The only thing I've really noticed is you can smell it more sometimes. Okay, I'll give you but, that. When you drive around Las Vegas, it's like, what did a cat die here? Or like, what the hell is there dog poop? Oh, wait, people are smoking. Other than that, I haven't really seen, you know, a big difference. People that I, you know, now and again would see people that were stoned. You see the same amount of people that were stoned before it was legalized. That's the thing that, I don't know, I used to do police ride-alongs and stuff. And you think about, oh, like, bad guys shouldn't have guns. Okay, bad guys have guns. Bad guys have guns. Right now they have guns. Like, Bad guys are walking around with guns. Bad guys are driving around drunk. You know, when they do something to get to do a crime or to get an accident, we hear about it, but you can ignore it. But there's bad people walking around right now with guns, and there's drunk people driving around. Like all the bad things are happening. It's just it's still illegal, but they're still doing it. I mean, I'm not saying it's right or that they're justified or that we should ignore it. I'm just saying, like, you can't exactly like, just because it's illegal that people ain't doing it right now and that. I'm just saying we're safe, even though people are doing it to some extent. It's we're not safe when something happens, but for, you know we have to. We can't ignore the fact that they're out there doing it. Like bang, gang bangers are driving around right now with guns in their cars, looking for trouble. Right? Like we'll hear about it when they cause trouble, but ninety nine percent of the time they're just driving around looking for trouble. Yeah, just the facts of the world, right? And while it's illegal, it's not like more laws would stop them from doing it, I guess is what I'm getting, is my point. The way you get them to stop it is you give them some alternative, right? Give them, like, something else to do. Give their parents something else to do. I don't know. But, you know, you change the circumstances so they're not just looking around whatever the bad people are, robbing banks or knocking people over. Or... I that's That's what I think. I mean, you're never going to get rid of all crime because there's people that just like doing crime, but there are people that do crime because that's, that's their right. option. Yeah, and, um, economic development is to me, seems like the best way, uh, you know, cause you, you look at, you look at where crime rates are high. It's poor neighborhoods, you know, and, uh, I don't want to get too far down a rabbit hole here. No, because no. when you bring when you when you bring it up, the fact that some people are just going to be bad—that's a good point. Because there's there's criminals, there's bankers that are doing bad white collar crime right now in whatever neighborhoods they're in, right? You know, there's lawyers that are being criminals right now. There's doctors that are criminals, getting people surgeries they don't need or whatever. Like there's there's all kinds of crimes happening all over. Just which ones we decide are the violent ones that we have to worry about all the time. Which ones the news is worried about all the time. But I think that was a good point. That and, you're never you know, gonna get rid of people just to be bad. You got a section of society that is told you're a victim, you can't succeed 
Um, everybody's against you. It's racism. It's this, it's that. And growing up in that environment, you've taken their hope away. And once you do that, you've lost it. Uh, lost a generation and it uh that's you know that's like when i say about economic development people you know normally people that have a decent job aren't going to be doing you know the stuff uh guns and waters out there good evening But, you know, I haven't done an in-depth study on any of it. That's just my opinion. It's kind of hard to know, right? Nobody's going to really do a study to give us any data on it. If they can. Yeah. What? So, um, let me, uh, let me change that and we'll do, what should we do as a hashtag? Hashtag weed. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's for the giveaway. I don't know if I want to put, I'm not giving away dope. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have a lot more viewers if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Oh. <laughs> we'll go patch. Hashtag patch. Because we're going to give away a patch. Uh, let me put it up. There we go. So put hashtag patch. Type hashtag patch out there. And in a little bit, we'll do the giveaway and give away. You'll get one of the patches. Um, I think only a couple people have it so far. Have this one. I need to order some more. I, I want to give them away, but I don't have that many. I need to order more so I can give them away and not worry about it. And then yeah, you'll difficult. get some stickers. In order, to get them cheap enough, in order to get enough patches to make them cheap enough to be able to give them away, you got to buy so many that it's like the, the order is crazy huge. So even though they don't cost much, you have, you have so many of them that it ends up costing a fortune to get them. Yeah, so I, 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 I know if I had ordered more, you know, the per unit cost goes down, but you know, your outlay is a lot more at one time. And, yeah. and then you're sitting on hundreds and hundreds of patches. Uh, hillbillies out there. Uh, guns and water. I'm not. Oh, sorry, Barbara. Think, I didn't see you there. Oh, sorry, I've only been back there for like 15 minutes. Uh, oh, shit, really? No, I'm just messing around. Oh, like say something. I'm, I don't sell them. I, I don't sell my patches. They're all oop, only to be given when, away. Uh, you can't buy his love. When um, who did it? When Roy put weed patch out there, do you think that counts? Like because there's a hashtag and patch, or do you think it doesn't count because it's not? Uh, I don't know. Because don't think so. He but had he, already but, put patch, yeah. so uh, I can't tell. We'll never know now. But I'm just curious, you know, if it, you know, like, let's say the thing was Warbird and you typed, no, that wouldn't work. If your thing was Bird and you typed Warbird, do you think it would take that because you typed Bird? I I think it might because I, I, I think I've heard somebody say that it, something, that situation where it counted. I know there's a way that if you don't put in anything, it'll take everybody's comment yeah i'm just wondering i don't know how we'd experiment with that did you guys see the new ai feature are you guys kids or he's seen it uh no. wait are you paying for it you no. pay for it. are you paying for yours barbecue your stream yard 
No, I stopped paying for it when I stopped doing the show. Um, there's a when you go to make your thumbnails now, it gives you a little AI button. I don't know if you guys see it or not, or if you get it or not. Like when you go to create the show and you and it says, "Do you want to put a thumbnail or whatever that button is?" There's another button there now. It freaked me out. I was like, "Oh wait, there's AI." Oh, I didn't notice. Yeah, I actually played with it a oh. little bit the other day just to see what how it worked. And it's pretty cool. It's cool. Uh, this is still Canadian, right? So that's the first Canadian AI I fiddled with, I think. Uh, there's only I four watched, entries uh, so far. Oh, snap. What are we entering? Already got uh, give away his patches. Get one of his logo patches and PVC from Alan Aker. Oh, my God. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag patch. patch. P A T C H. Of course, that first one was defective that you held up because it was upside down. I want it right side up. No, that's an error patch. It's worth more. Oh, yeah. okay. Let's print. Excellent. Yeah, print it upside down. There's this uh, thing that comes up on my Instagram once in a while, and I look at it, so I'm surprised it doesn't come up more often. But it's a channel where they talk about coins and sometimes dollar bills, but mostly coins. And it'll be like, look at this. Whenever you see one of these quarters, look at this thing. And whenever you see this little dot on here, it's worth 85 bucks. Or like, look at this dollar bill. And if you get this amount of numbers on it, it's worth 100 bucks. You know, so it's, it's all these things to look at in your change. You ever seen those kind of things? Yeah. I I watch them. And then I stopped watching them just because I don't want to dig through all my change. and be disappointed. I think that'd be cool for like kids or something though. Like give them uh, just a bunch of things. They'll find if there's any, you know, treasures in here. It, I don't know, back it, when it, I changed when I was a little kid or look at coin collections, I guess, you know, like, oh, look, look, you know, like, here's another one. Here's another one. But I never had anything like that to look for, you know, like I was just like, oh, look, here's a penny from England or here's a penny from some other country or here's a penny from some year. But it wasn't like Here's a big pile of change. Look for the one with the broken corn cob, and it's worth 85 bucks. Like That just seems like a neat... It's a good like way to get the kids to clean out the sofa, that's for sure. Yeah, right. I still will look for wheat pennies just because my granddad collected them. So he would always tell me, you know, if you find wheat pennies, give it to me, and I'll give you a regular penny. And they're not worth any more than any other penny. Yeah, they are. But not really. Yeah. Uh, but I still, I still will, you know, I'll spot them because I, and I'll hang on to them. I don't, I don't collect them. So if, you know, if I lose them or spend them, I don't, it doesn't bother me, but I like, I like seeing them because it reminds me of collecting them from my granddad. It's one thing I miss about working retail is the coins I would get to find. Like, I've got a ton of buffalo nickels, a ton of wheat pennies. I used to have a ton of bicentennial quarters until the children's mother decided to spend all those the one day. I, I bet you I had, like, 30 bucks worth of bicentennial quarters. And I know people say, oh, they're not worth anything more than a quarter. Don't care. Um, I, I actually have two Indian head pennies. From I think one's eighteen ninety seven. I think the other one's like eighteen ninety three. Those are pretty sweet. I have some that have Queen Elizabeth on them, and I think they say Canada on top of them or something, which is kind of uh, weird. They have that misprint on there. Culture rare, really weird. Yeah, working at grocery stores, I used to, I would uh, when you get like the silver. Uh, quarters and stuff I, you could hear the difference when you're putting your you know picking up change you'd hear the you hear the clink and you know it was different but i never kept them oh man i i would set them aside you know because they were neat but i never never thought about um keeping them yeah and so I've you know there's tons of them that i could have had for a while i would go to the bank Whenever I would work near there, and whenever I think about it, I would, uh, you know, you buy like a hundred dollars worth of whatever, fifty cent pieces yeah. or quarters, dimes, whatever, it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, you just open the roll. You actually don't have to open it. You just slide them out, look, and, you know, what two or three of them will be, maybe, you know, depending on the year. Back a long time ago, two or three of them could be silver. And you just swap in a normal quarter or whatever. And, yeah, that's a great way back in the day to get it. I think you could probably still do it to some extent. Uh, I think could... most of the junk silver's out been pulled out of circulation is i don't I think it's not definitely harder but i have seen people that do it. but a place like what you got where or like a vending person like i knew a kid that did yeah. vending machines when i was a kid that guy holy moly if he would have been thinking about that back then <clears throat> like i can't even imagine he must have seen garbage bags full of coins every day yeah i'm not even kidding like probably a garbage bag because he had like those cloth bags full i don't think yeah. he bothered counting them they probably just weighed them Uh, so I'll give it one more minute, and then we'll we'll do the dry. I cannot believe there's only four people entered. Well, there's it's up to seven now. Oh, that's good. Still pretty good odds. Well, you got to be up in the middle of the night. You got to be able enough to get over to a keyboard. I've listened to shows in the middle of the night on my phone, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting up. There's no way I'm getting over there in time. Uh, guns water. What's the weather like everywhere? Is it uh, time to start gardening yet? Or are you still sitting with snow? Where, where's everybody at? Spring happening yet? We're getting snow right now. Oh, shit. So it's still yeah. heaters and electric blanket type of weather? If you're it, a west. It's 42 here right now. Oh, shit. That's pretty cold. We had tornado uh, watches last night. And then snow tonight. It's been pretty nice. Is tornadoes a regular thing in Pennsylvania? Uh, not like in the Midwest or anything. Uh, I mean, they happen every now and then, but... So it's unusual to get a tornado warning no not, a, not unusual to get the warning or a watch but okay. um a touchdown uh it, it i wouldn't call it rare but it's not uh common either it's been pretty nice here the last couple days sunny and kind of warm and then today it clouded over and it's sprinkled on and off. I say about four or five years ago, there was a tornado that ripped through about two miles south of where I live right now. And actually it destroyed a barn We got a really, really nice barn now, but the one that was there was completely wiped out. We've been having rain nonstop for like the last three or four days. We had that for like the last week or whatever, and now it's gone finally. Guns of Water said. They get tornadoes, but usually not for a long distance. And Hillbilly, uh, AC was on a few days ago and now is 39 degrees right now. Crazy. I just leave my front door open. That makes the house actually really comfortable. Until nighttime, you know, then you got to close it. That or I just close the gate on the porch and leave the front door open and let the dogs roam all night. Figure if anybody wanted to come in that bad, they got to contend with three dogs. And I'll know. Uh, 
All right. Uh, let's see who's going to win. And it is Guns and Water. So send me your address. Send it to untacticalfoss at gmail.com. It's the email that's scrolling at the bottom. And the next couple days, I'll try and get it mailed out to you. A uh, couple patches, maybe a few patches, some stickers, and whatever else I throw in a box. But congratulations. Congrats. Yeah, that uh, I crossed the 1,800 sub mark, so I wanted to do a giveaway. Oh, that's awesome. Congrats, boss. Hey, Cam, bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah, I'm getting fat. Bigger, a little bigger every day. <laughs> PH80. Oh, and Michael Dunn, I don't know if I said hello to you, but hello. Hello. Hello again. I listened to um, 2001 Space Odyssey, listened to the audio book. Oh, really? And, yeah. It was good. It's kind of long. It it's, feels long. It's not really any longer than most of the other books. It's uh, for audiobook. It's is it six hours? Holy moly! Was it a book and then they made a movie out of it, or is it a movie and yeah, then they made an audio book out of it? It came out in '68, and I think the movie came out in '68 or '69. So it was a movie first, or I mean, a book first, and then they made a movie adaptation. Yeah, that okay. the movie adaptation, I. I went back and I watched, rewatched it today. And they did a really, overall, did a really good job on the adaptation. There's a lot of exposition on that they couldn't put in the movie because the movie would be like six hours. But uh, they, I like the book. There's, there's some stuff in the movie that you know they kind of condense down which the book explains more detail about what's going on uh, like the, the, and like the thoughts and stuff like you never get the full character because in the book they can talk about what's going on in their head and in the movie you know, yeah they can do is run. Uh, like with the monolith in the movie it almost kind of looks like the monolith is there while the monkey people are figuring out they can smash things with the bones. But in the book, there's a few chapters that lays out how all that happens, and it's the monolith that causes the change. Right. That's what I thought. They started, they had a reason to fight over something. What? No, it's, they, they're basically, the monoliths, they are sent out to, kind of as an experiment to progress different species. So it sends out um, uh, a wave. A... In the movie, it's a sound, but I think, I don't know if it's actually a sound or just like a, I don't know what kind of way. I don't remember if they described what the wave is, but it affected the brain so that, the one of the monkey men was progressed enough where it affected him that he made the next step to using a tool and then being able to hunt and protect, you know, help the species make a huge jump. Hmm. So and, they're put out to kind of amplify or like help give a push to the yeah. evolution on the planet or wherever they stick them. Yeah. And Do they say who sticks them? No. And then kind of Hal, the 
the computer that goes crazy. There's more explanation of why he goes crazy and how, you know, the, you see the progression as he starts making mistakes and the astronauts see that there's something going on in the movie. It's more all of a sudden something happens. And then at the end, after he shuts down Hal, after Dave shuts Hal down, in the book, he continues on with the mission. And the robot? Then, no, no, oh. the guy, the astronaut, the one, the one astronaut that's left alive. Because there's not much he can do. I so he just. I remember the movie now. I haven't, I can't remember last time I watched it. Yeah, in the movie, they go to. Um, to Jupiter, but in the book they go to Saturn, to one of the moons in, uh, around Saturn. And I think it was Saturn in the book. But uh, so he, he keeps going and there's a huge monolith that's on the on the, one of the moons. and It's like 50 feet tall, something like that. In the movie, it's just floating out around Jupiter. But in the book, he goes, takes the little um, pod vehicle. Shuttle. And as he's going to land on top of it and kind of goes through it like it's a wormhole. Hmm. And so that experience is a little different because in the movie, you see different colored lights. But in the book, it's stars that are racing past him. Then he ends up at uh, in the book. You, you know, he ends up in a in the movie. He ends up in a room, but they don't really ex explain much about the room. In the book, it kind of explains more about that. The it's based on TV transmissions that the aliens had received, so they figured that's what Earth is like. So they built an Earth for him what you know a small section of earth for him to survive in and then they, they give him food but it's kind of generic food and there's there's an episode of uh, the ne star trek the next generation the casino royale where they go to a casino and it's based you know, the aliens had based it off a book, which I think pretty much sounds sounded exactly like it does from Space Odyssey. So I think they stole it from that. But then he the the aliens had developed to basically they had no bodies. They were just a kind of a consciousness stored in the universe. Uh, and that's what Dave, the astronaut, he progresses and becomes starts becoming like that. So he travels back to earth and he actually detonates. There's, I don't know if it's, if there were weapons or satellites, I don't recall. Cause I'm, it's kind of listening while working. So I'll miss some little details, but there's a bunch of nuclear powered things in the atmosphere that he detonates when he gets there. But he so he can travel through space without none of that's in the book or I mean in the movie, right? No. In, yeah, okay. in in the movie they kind of allude to it. That's what the baby is in the movie. You see the big baby floating in space. That's that's actually Dave the astronaut. He he becomes the star child because he's progressing to where he doesn't need a body. And that's that's what that represents in the movie. And they talk about talk about it in the book. But it's more explained in the book, so it makes more sense. The movie is still incredible. For being 68 or 69, the special effects in it, um, the, the, it looks like they could fake a moon landing. Kubrick could. Kubrick's the one that directed it. Gary, just saying. Yes. <laughs> But I mean, the movie is good, but the book fills in a lot more detail. It's it's worth listening to or reading. 
however you take your media. Well, don't watch the sequel because it's awful. Uh, some people like the sequel that the story is better, but it's slower. And 2001 is kind of slow. Mm -hmm. But I still, you know, an incredible movie and a really good book. Uh, we are hillbillies asking what movie 2001 space odyssey. I, we're kind of comparing the book to the movie. Yeah. He said he had listened to the audio tape. Oh, um, yeah, there was, did you see the new, uh, Godzilla yet? No. Godzilla versus Kong, Kong, King Kong versus some other monkeys and another lizard. I just not. I don't know. I'm not. Ex it doesn't thrill me. It starts off with them going. Remember how science used to think there wasn't a hollow earth with a whole nother set of giant critters living inside of the earth. What else did we get wrong? <laughs> They're just doubling down on the whole inside of the earth. There's a whole nother earth, and there's two layers of that earth the upside down part and the regular side up part. And yeah, there's whole nother spoiling it. There's whole other King Kongs down there. And other well, when, come up. essentially, when Godzilla, when Godzilla uses his atomic breath, why is it pink? There's it should be blue or white or or green or something well, like that, not pink. Orange, orange turned blue. I don't know. Yeah, and then the mechanical pretty... fist. I. Oh yeah, King Kong gets a power glove or whatever. Yeah, I got. I lost track. It's like, it's like they went up to like they're like hey let's go out in the street and just ask people stuff and then they're like oh yeah put another layer of metal earth in there oh yeah put a giant lizard in there way bigger than godzilla oh yeah put like a whole other like pile of monkeys down there oh yeah give them a robot hand yeah like oh do this like oh yeah make new spaceships they just took like a hundred ideas and were like screw it let's use them all let's put them all in there it's like a two hour long movie it's impossible to keep up with uh, Hillbilly said he thought we were talking about. Whoop! I'm, well, I'm clicking on the wrong screen. Put it in uh, I'm all. There we go. Star Trek. I did mention Star Trek, where one of the stories they they borrow from 2001. I'm fairly certain. And uh, Planet of the Ape Planet of the Apes came out. Um, I think. 2001 was 68 and Planet of the Apes was 69. It might be the other way around, but they were like a year apart. Not Planet of the, the Apes was 68. 2001 was like a massive budget and Planet of the Apes was like looking at TV show. Almost. Yeah, they both came out in the same year, 68. Oh, okay. But well, the... Like the special effects on Planet of the Apes at the time. And oh, the I makeup. Think. Makeup was really good. And then it made a lot of money, but unfortunately, the same studio had put out uh, Dr. Doolittle, which bombed and almost killed the studio. So they cut the budget for the second movie and cut the budget even more for the third and fourth and fifth kept cutting the budget, even though each movie, each planet of the apes movie made more money than the previous one. You're talking about audio or books and then movies that I remember reading Dr. Doolittle when I was a little kid. And then I seen the movie after, but I think the movie was from before I was born, but I hadn't seen it. You know, I had to wait until I was old enough to watch the movie, but I know I read the book before I seen the movie. Or actually, back in those days, there was no VCRs. I probably yeah. had to wait until the movie got replayed in a movie theater before somebody could take me to it. But I remember knowing the story before I seen the movie, and I was like, 
man, this sucks. That snail or whatever was so lame. And I was like, oh, man, this is horrible. So I think that might have been my first experience, like, liking the book better than the movie and, like, being disappointed with the movie. I don't know if I – I can't remember if I'm a little – you know, I can't remember being a little kid. But now that you said that, I can remember that that instance of being like, damn, that snail was weak, among other I've, things. Because I really I've heard that, that, that the, the movie was – really bad compared to the book but that i should listen to that one i should find the have you uh, i only seen well dr doolittle was like a winnie the pooh book it was like a little drawing book with little words and you learn how to read oh it. was it, it wasn't like, i mean what i remember it was that kind of book it wasn't like a book you read i was a little little kid like playing with stuffed animals little kid like i was just learning to re- i don't know how old i was but i was just learning to read i think i don't think this was like a book with no pictures like a Actually, Winnie the Pooh was an actual book. What am I saying? I'm thinking it was more like Cat in the Hat or something, where it was like just a picture book with some words, not a real book with some pictures in it. Oh, I always thought it was like a novel. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I only seen a little kid version because I was a little kid. Wasn't it from like the 60s, though? Didn't the movie come out like the 60s? Yeah. Yeah, see, it was made before I was born, so maybe they made a little kid's book out of it. I mean, I don't know. It was a long time ago. But I remember, all I'm saying is I remember knowing the story, watching the movie, and going, I really was hoping the movie would be better. I don't know if I thought uh, that because I was a little kid. I probably just was, like, disappointed. X Adam one is asking, is anybody know about audio mic setups? I'm being offered a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 Studio 3rd Gen any good i have never heard of it i've got just a cheap uh one of the newers the cheap chinese mic because i'm cheap i'm gonna say i've never heard of that mic either the newer newer whatever you want to call it that's what i started out with um they work fine i would say i think what 30 bucks that they i mean it's freaking awesome for the price it's just uh it picks up everything so, so if you don't get quite there that's a two they're good for for getting started you know that's yeah 100 percent. because you know 20 30 bucks you get a mic and a and an arm and you're off and running well yeah, it's a 200 200 and uh 100, wait, 289 to 339 dollar mic depending on what options you get with it and it's uh the kind of mic that just looks like a microphone but whatever it's got that big fat round cord with the three insides and then it connects yeah. to a red box and then that connects to your computer so it's a whole setup it's not just like a usb mic just fyi uh, I just yeah i do up. run mine through a, a mixer just a cheap uh pile Mine is just a USB cord that plugs into my computer. I don't have a box between my microphone and my computer. But mine, mine runs through the mixer. I have looked at, um, I'll look at Shure mics now and again, but I don't know if spending the money will add enough value to the, make it worth it. You know, is it going to add get- enough? to the chat i want to get the things where i've heard of where you can push a button and you hook up different webcams and every time you push a button it flips to a different webcam so you could have like an overhead a different one and a different one and then those have probably mics in them right uh, he's saying comes with all the stuff trading for a hundred dollars that sounds like a good deal but i don't know anything about them offhand yeah, I've never um, heard of that particular brand either. There's only the other one thing left. is you want to make sure that if it's used that they haven't blown it out or anything like that. There's only one left in stock, which tells you that they're not making it anymore. They maybe are coming out with a new model or something, so whatever that's worth. But as far as Foss's question goes, uh, honestly... Um, I think your audio is pretty darn good. Um, 
you, know, you, you don't have any background noise uh, where you're set up at. I mean, every once in a while, the garage door opens or something big whoop. Um, but like, I know with mine, uh, with how thin my walls are, uh, even my exterior walls, you know, a loud truck went by and you it would pay, pick up on the show and I'm like, oh my God. Uh, and that's why I upgraded from it. But I, I've never noticed that with your show, so. Uh, defense dad is out there. He's asking, when do you son of a bitch asleep? This is never. not. Sleep is for the week. Uh, when y'all get up in the morning, that's generally the <laughs> This son of a bitch is sleeping right now. What are you talking about? This dude is sleeping as we're speaking. Yeah, so is George. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now. Defense Dad, he's still using the Fifine USB mic and arm. 60 bucks from Amazon. I I had one of those, and I can't remember if that's the one I gave to my son to use. I'm he's using it. the Rode Podcaster mic. I mean, not right now. I'm just mobile right now. But back when I was doing the show, um, for the longest time, I was using the Rode Podcaster mic. And uh, up until I started having those weird issues, it, it was awesome. Well, up until a few months ago, I was using a Blue Yeti Nano. But I don't use it for lives anymore. I just use the mic on my headset. I bought a headset uh, to do that, but I couldn't hear myself. I didn't like that. I just have a USB mic, and it plugs into my computer, and I listen to the sound out of... Well, now I have speakers. These little speakers are behind his butt over here. What I like about this... This mic and headset setup is it's all going through the directly into the audio jack, so it's not messing with any of that USB crap. So, oh, any of the processing errors you would have with USB, you don't have that with this. So sometimes old school can eliminate a lot of problems. Now that you yes, say that, sir. you're right. I need a regular jack too, so mine just. When I plug it in, my computer will go, is that a microphone or a speaker? What did you plug in? And I'll tell it microphone, and then it done. You know, think about it. Uh, my little mixer is USB, so it goes into a USB. Well, that's a sound card, essentially, right? Like a USB sound card. So it's when it plugs into the computers, it have to do like a, any kind of drivers, or does it just plug in and say, what is this? Or does it just work? Uh, it's it was plug and play, so it was okay. just plugged it in. Yeah. Now, does uh, it give you the ability to like mute and do things like have more than one microphone and like if you had three people sitting at a desk, you could mute two of them and have one or that kind of thing? Mine only has one input. Um, I think uh, I had looked at kind of bigger ones but i didn't need need all the extra stuff so i just wanted to be able to um, adjust the tone a little bit because the the mic i started out with originally uh was i had one of the usb the little um uh, kind of preamps and it was okay, but I didn't like the, the sound. And there's a little bit, there's some um, RCA jacks that you can do audio in. Then there's, there's a, I think there's, I don't want to move it because I don't want to touch any of the settings. Uh, and when I do like the stuff for Gary, 
the promos and stuff where I talk, I'll use this mic and I'll just run off of the, the mixer off the headphone jack into my little, uh, I uh, forget what brand. I don't have it out here. My little uh, sound recorder. Uh, Fed Stats going back to bed. Now we can have that for real giveaway, the big giveaway. And Guns of Water's wondering if there's a way to level all audio feeds in live chat. I can go in in and adjust everybody's audio a little bit. A little uh, bit, but there's there's no way um, to normalize the sound, so it won't do all of them automatically. That makes no sense either. That should be. I feel like that should be super easy to do. I think if you pay for like the highest amount that StreamYard offers you can but i mean that's what 50 bucks a month or something it's insane massive ripoff i didn't know that no that's a ripoff they should give that to if i if i remember correctly i I could be wrong but when i looked through the plans the one time i could have swore that was an option larry knopf is out there good evening Or did you say it was six hundred a year? Fifty bucks a month. It's twenty five for the normal. Wow. Or you make three or four thousand dollars every time you go live. It's no big deal yeah. to spend six hundred bucks for the software. There's... Streamyard Pro is thirty nine a month. I was close. We're rounding up a little bit. We're rounding it basic, up a little bit. Basic is twenty. <laughs> I don't see anything as far as audio listed as uh, additional. That thing extra on is for there. The extras extra are for it's got full HD, 1080p. You can have more than one camera. Uh, you can multi stream to eight destinations instead of three. That's the biggie. I would like to be able to do that. Although. I don't know if I have eight, but you know. You can have four seats for uh, co hosts and stuff like that rather than just a standard one or two. That's cool. That could be good. Yeah. I just can't really. Only 40 bucks instead of 25? 39 a month. If you pay month, if so. you pay annually, it's thirty five sixty seven a month. Nobody's got that kind of money. Nope. But now that we make three or four thousand dollars every time we go live, because of the way YouTube structured, uh, it might get easier to put those. Bills. I know, right? Who barely pays twenty five a month? That's what I used to pay. Well, I'm just looking. I type Streamyard plans, and I'm looking at the page. Well, you could be a Streamyard shill, and then what do you get? Ten bucks every time you get somebody to get on. So you could get the forty dollar plan, and then just shill forty or four plans every month, and then get it for nothing. And I get a reduced price on my yearly plan because I got grandfathered in because I was an early adopter. So, I wonder if I got that. I got that with Patreon. I wonder if they're figuring that into the pricing. That's why mine is lower than. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, because I have a lifetime. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but I remember it was no brainer. There was no way I was going to pay for the premium plan was way more than the regular oh there's also a premium plan okay and a growth plan okay so there's two more bigger plans yet one that's 70 a month oh my god another one that's 210 a month 
<laughs> what? Oh yeah. Where'd you find this at? I can go look, I guess. Uh, I guess you can go to StreamYard. Every time you go to StreamYard, it logs you in. That's probably more for people to use in StreamYard for corporate stuff. Yeah, it is. Probably. The, the first ones I was looking at were what they considered individual plans, and then these are business plans. More geared oh. towards the webinar portion of what StreamYard can do. But for 70 a month, you can have 15 people in the green room. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, you can there do webinars. You know, so we... essentially, for two ninety nine a month, that lets you go live just on StreamYard and then yeah. host your shows and stuff so you don't even need YouTube anymore. Yeah. So like you're saying, like your own uh, product. Well, it's more of a webinar type thing like Zoom. At that point, it's, it's geared to be a Zoom replacement. M. Gabriel's out there. Good morning. 15 backstage participants. Good morning. Good morning. It's only get 10 seats. <laughs> Let's start the day off right. <laughs> And Guns and Water, I did get your email, so I'll try and get that sent out here in the next couple few days. So for what it's worth, I'm looking at my stream yard, and because I'm not fancy like Gizzard, mine is twenty five bucks a month or forty nine bucks a month, and if I flip it to yearly, thirty nine bucks a month. So it is fifty bucks a month for us regular people. I'm sorry. You should take them up on it just so that because you get it for cheap. 12 backstage participants. Oh, wait. What does that mean? 12 people backstage. What the hell is the point of that? Or is that? No, that's a backstage, right? Mm -hmm. You can have 10 people on the screen and 12 people can enter in the backstage. Big whoop. Yeah. I guess that'd be handy, but. Can you imagine having 12 people backstage? It's like a whole other chat. Well, at least that Guns and Barbecue would have somebody to talk with while he's waiting in the green room. Right. Usually switch between the two cameras. That seems interesting. I don't know why they just don't give us that. Uh, Guns and Water is wondering if there's a Linux program that'll do what StreamYard does. I don't hmm. know. StreamYard's web based. Mm -hmm. And basically, all of their processing takes place on their server, which is what Magical. saves your computer an awful lot of processing. Well, and it saves everybody's computer. So the lag and everything would be insane if we had client side just clients or whatever you call it, like client based uh, texting like or whatever communications. It would be horrible. So. I mean, back in the gun channels days, trying to create stuff uh, and then go and live in through the end of Google. What do they call it? Google Hangouts? Because uh, that's what this is all replaced, Google Hangouts. And we all kind of ran around looking at replacements to that. This is, I don't even know how to say, night and day, right? This is like an iPhone compared to a, uh, what were those things called? Like a, like a, uh, uh, just an old fashioned telephone or whatever. Like, you know, this is, Streamer is really, really good for what you get. You look at it compared to Zoom. Everybody runs around acting like Zoom is good. It's clunky and shitty compared to Streamyard. And X Adam One's wondering why there's not a rifle on the right there. Oh, that reminds me. YouTube pulled down one of my videos. What did you oh, do? Wait, what? Yes, what you did. They... I wonder what it could have been. They said it um Sp uh, possible spam or something else, <laughs> but I had a link to RNL displays. It was my Godzilla video that showed all my yeah. Godzilla stuff. We and I, in the description, I had a link for RNL displays. Yep, happened to me too. Yep, we all got channel hits on that. 
but uh, it, I don't have a rifle there just because I don't usually forget to think about it. I have in the past put either a rifle or pistol back there, but normally I just don't think about it when I come out here. I have enough trouble remembering that I'm doing a chat. But I only had that link in two videos. I think one was the review of. Maybe it was that one. And then the one that they pulled down. But I only made that for Pink. To show Pink my Godzilla stuff. So I didn't, I didn't fight it. I don't remember which video of mine it was, but. Probably yeah. some live show where I said something about it, and yeah, I don't remember what they did. But my video but, had all of sixty-seven okay. views in like four years, so I just deleted the video. It's like I like don't they care. Tore through it. Like we all got hit on the same day, right? Like they tore through mm. and took down dozens of our videos because of RNL displays. And uh, Hillbilly said. The Georgia Shooting Connection is grandfathered in. They pay seven bucks a month more than he does uh, for way more stuff like multiple co hosts. Well, I pay $200 a year. Oh, like I said in the past, I get enough with the free version, and I don't know if the added features of the the paid version will will add enough to make it worthwhile for me. You know, I would love to be able to have you know your custom logo up there and stuff like that, but I don't know if it's if it's worth it for my chats he can use single action by fanning it he fans it with his paw i have a good night hillbilly he's going to bed see you hillbilly Well, if he's getting beauty sleep, he should have went to bed a long time ago. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, X Adam one said Matt got his. Yeah, um, they've been doing weird stuff. Didn't Brooke get one taken down in the middle of a show for? Yep. I don't even know what she was saying because I was not paying attention. I was looking somewhere and I'm like, what happened? She stopped talking. I looked because over of the, the title of her live stream because it was about suicide prevention and they didn't like the word suicide because it said something about promoting self harm and right. stuff like that. Yeah. So it wasn't so much the words she said as they just decided to trigger it or whatever at that moment. Want me to get it out of here? He doesn't have to hold on to it. He just feels better. But it is a, a resin duplicate. It's not actually a gun. He keeps his gun in the other hand. Oh, barbecue. Yo. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Um, <clears throat> Budget Guns and Gear has a GoFundMe floating around out there somewhere. Uh, Gizzer Gary had the link over on his members only chat tonight. I know that. Um, I'm going to be putting some wrestling photos from states up on the uh blind guy photography Instagram page. Uh, probably tomorrow uh so if you want to check out some of the photos that i got down at states check that out and other than that i i guess uh thanks for the invite as always boss this was fun uh well thanks for showing up 
uh, Gizzard? Uh, well, he he already covered the uh, the GoFundMe thing. So, uh, see, I have a knife review out this week on the Concept Cryo. Uh, also, knife shorts about every day. And, of course, Foul Territory this Friday. Every Friday at 9 p.m. Central Time. And always, thanks for having me. I appreciate you being here. Let's do... Gearwebsites.com for 2A stickers, patches, books, logo design, web design, 3D printing, technology consulting, and so much more. Gearwebsites.com Webs, anything you want to plug? Um... I guess not. Thanks for hosting. I felt like there was something I was going to bring up. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, there is an overnight this weekend. I don't know what we're going to talk about. I have actually haven't thought about it. So hopefully I'll come up with a topic or somebody will give me a topic to talk about. If Jesus. anybody... What's that? Jesus of the world. Oh, I thought you said Jesus. <laughs> I do like cheese. Uh, so if um, if anybody who listens or is out in the chat ever has topic ideas, um, I'm always open because that's one less thing I have to come up with myself. Oh, I figured out what I was going to say. Um, I don't think Woods is out there, but have you guys been paying attention to Professor Yamani by any chance? The guy from, uh, he's a professor no. from South Carolina, I think. He's doing a class last, it's seven weeks long. He's This was the second week. Next week will be the third week. But in addition to that, he's doing a book club. And I think that's once a month. So I know Barbecue's in here. I don't know if he's heard about it, but I know Woods was a big one for the book club. And this is essentially pretty close to what you were doing. He's corking you. Um, but it's with a bunch of college people, I imagine, and a bunch of people from the liberal gun club uh, follow his stuff. So I don't know if you guys, anyway, I wanted to plug that. Is that uh, I think the first one might be this week. Is that tomorrow? So it might be last minute notice for some people, but uh, I think he's planning on doing a couple of them to see if it catches or catches on or whatever. So that's what I wanted to plug. Professor Yvonne, okay. it's uh, Light Over Heat is the YouTube channel. Uh, so I appreciate everybody that was out there in the live chat. And once again, congrats to Guns and Water. If you watch this in replay, leave a comment. Anything we talked about, agree with, disagree with, uh, let me know. Uh, sorry, I was laughing at Boone's farm. <laughs> I keep clicking on the wrong screen. There we go. Boone's farm strawberry wine. Uh, so, uh, if you watch the replay, leave a comment. I read all the comments and they are always appreciated. And other than that, I hope everybody has a good rest of the night and go do something good. Mm -hmm.